Welcome to Butterflies of Biosphere. Today I have with me Bob Ede, who is a species champion for the wall brown, or do we call it just the wall these days? I call it wall brown, personally. All right, okay, but... for, the, for the wall brown, <laughs> um, uh, as part of the Sussex branch of butterfly conservation's efforts to monitor this species. So welcome, Bob. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. Well, I've kind of pulled you out of your comfort zone today, haven't I? Indeed, yeah. It's, um, I know this area for various things, but not necessarily for wall brown. But it was quite important. I mean, it's so easy to stray outside of the biosphere, and I like to try and bring it back. Uh, last time we were with Neil Hume and looking at uh, clouds of Chalk Hill Blue, uh, and I can understand why we did that, but it's good to be back here. But that puts you at a disadvantage. Yeah, I mean, I could guarantee showing you some at the back of Seaford, where I come from. Um, you know, I know almost exactly where I could show you some. Um, but over here, it's worth a try. Um, I saw my very first wall brown of the year two years ago here. Right. And um, so there's a very good chance. And Mark Cady a couple of years ago also saw huge numbers of them. In, and that was actually the first brood, which is normally a smaller brood than the second brood. Okay, so every good reason to suspect that we might be lucky. There's every good chance. So, Bob, this is fairly typical habitat for the wall, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It's these um, bare footpaths on the South Downs near the coast, which are particularly good for them. And it is, in fact, a male that we're looking for at the moment. And, and, and you told me that immediately, didn't you? Because you recognise a flyer. Yeah, I mean, the flight pattern is very similar between male and female, but the, the way they perform, um, the male is quite distinct of, you know, holding onto its territory. And also, what we saw just now was every time another butterfly came past, it just shot up to try and defend its territory. Yeah. Um, so, um, so the males, what they're doing here is they're using this as territory to wait for an approaching female. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Basically, um, the female would normally hide in the long grass during the day, um, you know, taking flight occasionally. Um, Whereas the male just sits on the bare ground waiting for one to fly past. Yeah. Now, this sitting on the ground is uh, obviously, obviously waiting for a female, but they're doing something else, aren't they, while they're sitting there? They're thermoregulating. Yeah, basically they're basking in the sun. They're the sun-loving butterflies. So bare ground like this um, does generate a lot more heat than obviously sitting amongst the grass. Now, I read somewhere, and I can't remember where it was, but apparently they need to get to a body temperature of about 25 to 30 degrees. And, uh, and, and they, can, they can achieve that by doing this basking. In fact, I had a student when I was at Cambridge and we were in southern Spain, in Malaga, and she looked at the Pantopes blue, tiny, tiny little butterfly. Of course, it's, it was a blue male, and so therefore it was not taking in an awful lot of solar radiation, but it spent over 80% of its time basking. Mm -hmm. I guess this animal being a bit bigger with a more of a dark color anyway, it's not gonna spend so much time, but it makes you realize how important it is to thermoregulate for these animals. Absolutely. Um, the wall, for instance, on a really hot day, you would generally, all you see is it sitting in front of you on the path with its wings shut because it is, otherwise it'll overheat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, the other thing, of course, is when they fly, they lose heat, don't they? Yeah, that's, that's right. So all the time um, they're laying with their wings wide apart, um, they are getting much more heat. So, you know, come a really hot day, they would actually cook. I mean, when you're looking to see how many wall there are, just by sitting in one spot, you probably won't see many. But by going along like this, um, where they're sitting waiting for the female, you'll actually disturb them and they fly up and then you see them. You so know, you're kind of adapting your survey method to the ecology, the behavioural ecology of the butterfly? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, you do have to be extremely careful when counting wall because they do take up, take off fly along 20 yards, <laughs> land again. That's and so it, classic, and if isn't it? And I if, thought I saw one then, but I didn't. <laughs> but it's so easy to count a, a wall twice, or three times, or four yeah, times, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, whenever there's a suspicion I've already counted one, then I don't count it again, just in case. Yeah, I guess. Once the, once the wall have mated, um, the female would look for ideal spots to lay her eggs. This is the sort of area where I've seen them lay up several times with the roots just in the bare parts of the ground, the, the roots coming out. She would lay her egg actually on the root and once it hatched out, um, the little tiny little caterpillar, once it's eaten the egg, would make its way up and then be in the dense undergrowth like that. So in the winter it would have protection 
and in the summer it would have protection obviously because it can hide from all the pipits and skylarks etc. Okay Bob, <laughs> that was quite an effort wasn't it really? When you think about it we've walked right around the southernmost end of uh, Castle Hill National Nature Reserve, right through the middle and just mm. about to give up. Yeah, on one of the hottest days of the year and boy does it feel it now. I think the butterflies <laughs> are feeling it. Yeah, they, they certainly were, you know, there's he, all right throughout the walk, you know, there's less butterflies of all types probably than we expected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, wall brown was certainly very hard to come by today. Until of course we got to here. Yeah, this is the, obviously the local hotspot. Yeah, I wonder how many do you think we've seen? I reckon we've um, Until we got here, I well, mean, it until was just we, the one, wasn't it? Yeah, until we got here, it's um, one, maybe two. Uh, it's in a similar, same area, so yeah. it probably was just a single one. Um, but down here, I reckon we've probably seen eight. Right, yeah, yeah, I'd agree. And of course, it's been doing the regular thing, dropping down into the centre of the park, but more importantly, it's been actually trying to get into the shade, hasn't it? Mm, yeah, they've been settling in the foliage, you know, in a little bit of shadow, because once again, it is just too hot. And every time they've settled, they've rarely opened their wings at all. Now, we haven't seen any females, have we? No, no, but that's not uncommon. Right. Um, of, on you know, when I do my survey around the back of Seaford, you know, even though sometimes I see, you know, regularly 60 to 80 butterflies, it's normally only about five that would be females, because they really stay hidden. And of course, this butterfly is it's very hard to film, because if all it does, as soon as it lands, you get close enough and then off it goes again. Yeah, but down here, we've been suffering from too many gatekeepers. Every time, being a male, it's very territorial, so whenever it sees another butterfly, it tries to chase it off. And what astounds me is, is how far away you can see them coming. Oh yeah, their eyesight is terrific. Um, they are one of the hardest butterflies to photograph. Um, they seem to sense whenever you're getting close, and even when you take the picture, the actual sound of a shutter seems to send them up. And quite often I've just got a picture of an out of focus blurred butterfly taking off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been really fantastic just seeing them. Um, but I have to say, this is not the type of habitat that I really would have imagined them. I and mean, at one point we were walking right along a disturbed field margin, weren't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they just look anywhere where they think. I mean, the males obviously are just looking for females and um, they're just doing a, a thorough search. And obviously, the gatekeepers, I mean, when we started going down this path, we were just following it down. Um, but every time it settled, the gatekeeper put it up. And basically, at the end of the field, it turned right, being chased by a gatekeeper or chasing the gatekeeper, and it went along and we found another two or three along there. Yeah. Now, um, this butterfly, when it uh, settles, it, it seems to settle only for a very short time, doesn't it? But, but it kind of it begs a question, if it wants to cool down, why doesn't it keep just flying? Because it has been settling in the shadow, hasn't it? It has, yeah. I mean, once again, if there was less gatekeepers about, um, they would settle for longer, I'm sure. Yes. Um, and I suppose when it flies, it's using energy, isn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. So, you know, to, you know, settle in the shade is the, the optimum for it at yeah. the moment. And we haven't seen any nectaring either? Uh, just the once. Was it? Yeah, we did see one, I think, nectaring very briefly. Well, Bob, the one thing I'm bringing away from this is the distinctive flight, as you say, the flap, flap glide. It certainly is very noticeable, isn't it? Um, you know, when it's flying with the, um, the gatekeepers, it certainly is noticeable which is which, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, as you've said earlier on, it's rather similar to the grayling. It is, yeah. The, the grayling is a lot more exaggerated, um, but, you know, they do have, you know, certainly flight patterns are similar-ish. And I understand that it could be considered similar to the grayling in another way, in, in that I've read that the males also bash the females on the head with their antennae. Have you seen that in the wall? I haven't actually noticed that. Um, I've seen courtship probably three or four times now. And um, apart from, you know, the very close flapping around, you know, the male was circling the female, flap, yeah. flap, flap, with its wings, you know, sending its scent scales out. Um, I didn't actually notice anything with the antennae when I was watching that. Right, and also you, you've, you've spent a lot of time, haven't you, looking at the immature stages of this butterfly 
uh, through through its life cycle. Yeah, it's mainly the spring and the, the spring brood. It basically gets my butterfly season off early. This this year, I saw my first caterpillar. I think it was on the fifth of January. Right. So you know, my butterfly season starts much earlier than most people's. And you're able to uh, follow individuals' progress. Yeah, once you find um, a, s a small larvae in the middle of a grass tussock, um, I just mark it with chalk. Um, so the next day, I'll, or next time I'm up there, I can find it again. And most of the time, the caterpillar grows living in that same tussock if it's big enough. If the tussock is big enough, um, follow it right through to virtually full size, and then it disappears. I've only ever found four pupa. Right. Um, much the hardest stage to find, which is quite bizarre, really, because of course it doesn't move. You know, yeah. you think it would be quite easy to find. But you've been successful in following them through so that they emerge. Unfortunately, not yet. Um, I've found, as I say, four um, proper ones, but they've all been parasitized. And the other one I found was actually just forming as a pupa, and it's being eaten as it is forming by ants. Oh, how so, frustrating! Yeah, but it is very insightful, isn't it? It's very difficult, yeah. Um, I mean, how, a, you know, so many wall larvae can go through to pupation and not be found. Yes. Um, very difficult. Yeah. Anyway, if you uh, see any of the wall, particularly if they're away from the coast, we'd be very keen to hear about your records. You can either put them on the Butterflies of the Biosphere Facebook page or on the sightings page of the Sussex Branch of Butterfly Conservation. Bob, it's been a real delight and thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and your time with me about the war. My pleasure and just glad we found some. Yeah. <laughs>